All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I got a follow-up comment here from Gabriel SYT, and I want to just go over this comment and, and sort of make um, some corrections and uh, maybe sort of help uh, bring some clarification, some understanding. All right, so let's go over this. Uh, first of all, they say, thank you so much for addressing my question. This is greatly helpful. I agree that faith is important, as you showed as mentioned many times in the Bible. Faith is complicated, though. I have never met Jesus, nor had any religious epiphany. All right, so let me address that real quick. So you don't, in my opinion, you don't need an, an epiphany so much as you need faith. Now, um, so you said you never met Jesus. And so let's go look at a verse in the book of John. Forgive me, I'm trying to think. In John chapter 20, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. All right, so if you're familiar with this, this is when Thomas says, I'm not going to believe until I see it. All right, and so Jesus offers him, you know, hey, put your... Uh, Put your hand, put your fingers in my, you know, uh, behold, my hands reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing, right? And he says, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. All right, so again, this is another example of the importance of faith. All right. I was baptized in the Catholic Church as a baby and is as much as that helps I have that in my favor. All right. So now in regards to baptism, uh, John came baptizing in water. Let's take a look here. In Matthew 3, um, we, we read about John baptizing in the river, I believe. Does it say the river? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, I forget. I thought it said river. No, it doesn't say river. Okay. It doesn't matter. I could be way off on that. It doesn't matter. Alright, so... In verse 11, he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. All right, so we have the baptism of John which is nice but it is just a <clears throat> excuse me uh, it is just a um, gesture if you will of the real baptism which is the baptism of Jesus which is the Holy Ghost alright so when when Jesus baptizes us we are born of the Spirit of God all right, so when John baptizes, he's just doing that as a sort of a symbolic gesture. I don't know how else to say it. You know, when uh, you go back to to use uh, the circumcision as an example. All right, so after eight days, um, it was instructed that the child be circumcised. All right. In Genesis 3, or I'm sorry, Genesis 17, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Alright, so 
without getting into too much detail I think everybody understands what that is but that was not the true circumcision right? the true circumcision is the foreskin of your heart which means the cutting off of the flesh and giving yourself to the spirit right so to make them that distinction between the flesh and the spirit all right and so in John chapter 3 for example Jesus says we must be born again that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit so this this um, circumcision of the flesh is just symbolic representative of the true circumcision which is that of the heart which is cutting off the flesh of the heart and being born of the Spirit of God and so also the baptism of John the you know dunking your head in water or you know what the Catholics do they sprinkle water on the baby that's just a sort of a symbolic baptism that's not the real that's not the true baptism it's not the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ which is with the Holy Ghost which is being born of the Spirit of God okay All right, so back to the comment. I have never been a religious person, though. In 2010, I had a traumatic event that made me question everything. In my quest for truth and understanding, I became aware and broke the mind control as much as anyone can. I now see the coordinated evil deception evil and deception and how we are all under terror based mind control system I recognize that most all the news is either fabricated or at best manipulated I see the fingers of evil and control in every facet of existence science culture medical education governing technology etc I see intentional and coordinated efforts to cause drug addiction and every vice encouraged to the detriment and deprivation I see the outcome of that and how it is destroying many people I am in disbelief and disappointment that all of this is happening and I question why I was put here in the middle of all of this well real quickly let me just say that um, all these things that you're seeing should be examples of how wicked this world is and how this world is no good and then if you know about Jesus Christ you should know that Jesus will deliver us out of this wicked world alright so if you're familiar with the story of Moses Moses delivered his people out of the wickedness of Egypt and so also will Jesus Christ deliver us out of the wickedness of this world All right, he is our scapegoat he is our way out okay with all of that said and I could say a lot more I do believe there is a God the reason I am watching your channel is I believe the Bible must be real and I want to be bet I want to better understand what it says. Okay, again, now you've heard me say this a hundred times, and I'll say it a hundred more times. If you want to understand the Bible, all right, if you want to understand what it's saying, it starts with faith. Alright, believe that these are the words of God because they are they are directly from God alright this is not a translation this is not a man's interpretation 
This is the, the direct word of God. It's directly from God. You think about how, Moses, how uh, God gave Moses his word directly. Gave it right to him. Written with the finger of God. So also is this the, the direct words of God. And so without that faith, you know, no matter if you have a little bit of, if you lack a little bit of faith, then you're going to lack a little bit of understanding. So in order to understand it fully, you must have full amount of faith. That's the key. That's always been the key, is faith. Where was I? I do believe there is God. The reason I'm watching your channel is I believe God, the Bible must be real, and I want to better understand its ways. I believe Jesus was real. Jesus is real, and any app apprehension I side with his teaching that I know are the right things. If faith and belief alone are the only qualifications for heaven, I might not be going. Okay, so hold on a second. So, um, <clears throat> think about this. Jesus has done it all for us. All right. So he laid down his life for us. He has led the way for us. He has died, defeated death, and rose back to life and ascended to heaven. We that follow him will follow him from the grave to resurrection to ascension into heaven. He's led the way for us. He has done it all for us. Alright, so let's continue here. I want to get to that confidence and belief and faith that you have. And I will keep working at it. In my soul, I know I am a good person. Okay, so. Uh, in my soul, I know I am a good person. And so, this is where you're wrong you're not a good person you know you're not a good you should know you're not a good person if you're if you believe you're a good person you're deceiving yourself all right so jesus is asked he no jesus is said hey, hey i know that you are a good man let's see if i can find that verse here Hold on a second. I know it's here somewhere. All right. Give me a second here. Give me a second. I'll find it. Be patient. Right. I'm going to find it. Don't worry. It's there. I'm not making it up. Oh, goodness sakes. Oh, I can't find it. Mandela's come. Mandela has come and he's changed the Word of God. And it used to be in there, but it's not anymore. I can't remember where it's at either. Well, you know, I'm getting old. In Matthew 19, let's see if I can remember that next time. In Matthew 19, let's do this here. Matthew 19. In Matthew chapter 19, um, and behold, one came and said unto him, so, so this um, young fella, he comes to Jesus, and he says, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he, Jesus, said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. So there's none good but one, that's God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Okay, now, uh, real quickly here. If you know Jesus, you know that Jesus is God. Now, 
But Jesus does not say, I'm not good. All he does is ask, why callest thou me good? There's none good but one. That is God. See, Jesus doesn't correct him. He's just asking the question to get him to think, hey, if you're calling me good, then you're acknowledging that I'm God. Right? In a sense. Right? Because Jesus is God Almighty. And then he says, If thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus says, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? He said, Never mind the fact that this this young man is lying let's just assume that he's telling the truth that he's never committed a sin his entire life well that's still not enough all right <clears throat> that's still not enough Jesus said unto him if thou will be perfect go and sell all that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God and when the, the disciples heard it they were exceedingly amazed saying who then can be saved but Jesus beheld them and said unto them with men this is impossible all right so with men this is impossible no man can save himself no matter how rich how poor how perfect they are no man can save himself with men this is impossible but with God all things are possible all right so if you understand this then you understand that we can choose God all day doesn't matter it's only when God chooses us so we are at the mercy of God Almighty, 100%. And we are only saved by grace, by the grace of God, through faith. Just as we read in Ephesians chapter 2. It's a beautiful, beautiful chapter. It's Ephesians chapter 2. For by grace are you saved through faith. And not of yourselves. Not of yourselves. We are completely 100% at the mercy of God Almighty. He chooses us. We don't choose Him. He chooses us. So here in Matthew chapter 9 it says, Go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice right so I've come not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance so what this means is that God has mercy on us in that our sacrifices whatever we might do is no good at all it's no good whatever we do that's I mean <laughs> come on man you think you're gonna impress God? No, you're not. All of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Right? All of our good works, none of it is good enough. None of it is good enough to get to heaven. We are 100% at the mercy of God. Alright? So, by grace, by the grace of God, we are saved through faith 
not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. Not of works. I'm sorry, not of works, lest any man should boast. And not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. All right, it's not a, it's not a, uh, a reward. Uh, how do I say that? It's not a, uh, you know, it's not something we earn, right? So all right, so you did, you did a good job today, son. You get, you're gonna get uh, everlasting life because you did good work. No, and that's not it. It's a gift. It's a 100% gift, and we are at the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, and it's by grace, by the grace of God that we're saved through faith. So if we have faith, and Jesus says <clears throat> that whosoever believeth in me shall never die, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life it's always been about faith so you say you're a good person you're not a good person All right? and the law that was handed down to Moses is an example should be evidence that you're not a good person you know about um, let's see the Lazarus in oh goodness sakes in Lazarus in chapter six in Luke chapter sixteen and he's pleading the the rich man is begging <clears throat> excuse me is begging Abraham hey go tell my brothers you know he, and he cried and said father Abraham have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame but Abraham said son rememberest thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and thou art tormented and beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulfic, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. All right. And so he says, I have five brethren that he may testify, you know. For, and then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And of, co of course we know Jesus Christ rose from the dead. They still won't hear, right? But it, because they won't hear Moses and the prophets, right? And so, what's what is this about the law? See, the law is there to show us, to bring us to faith in Christ. So the law is there to show us that we are sinners that we need a savior no man can live up to the standard of the law no man has ever done it except for Jesus Christ and so the law shows us we need a savior and that's why they had these um, the, the offerings to God for the forgiveness of their sins because they know that they are not perfect they know that they need forgiveness of sin and so that's why offerings were made to God and this is ultimately why Jesus Christ laid down his life as the perfect offering to God for our sins all right and so the law is there as our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified 
by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So the law is there to show us that we are not good. The law is there to show us that we need a Savior. And Jesus Christ is here to show us that we have a Savior. It's Him. And Jesus will save us once we believe in Him. By grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So Jesus is here to save us that want to be saved. All right, And not everybody wants to be saved, unfortunately. That's the world that we live in. And this is condemnation. And this is the condemnation that has come. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. <clears throat> See, people don't want to admit that they're not a good person. People don't want to admit that they have done evil. They want to believe, oh, I'm a good person. No. No, you're not a good person. You need a savior. That's that's why I, you know, come to the Lord Jesus Christ because I am not a good person at all. I can't do it myself. There's no way. I got no chance. I've got no chance without the Lord. No chance at all. And so, um, you know. Most people, they won't come to that place. They won't come to that realization, that, recogniz that recogniz recognition that they need a Savior, right? We all need a Savior. None of us can do it. None of us are good. None of us have any chance at all without God. None of us have a chance at all without God. Of course, what's it say in John chapter 15, I think it is? For without me, ye can do nothing. Alright, so, uh, you know, if that hurts you, if that hurts your feelings, um, good. Alright, let it hurt, because the fact of the matter is you're not a good person. I'm not a good person. Reverend Smitty, he's not a good person. I guarantee it. None of us are good. There's none good but one. That is God. Only God is good. Right, and I know where I failed. We have all failed. Yeah, including Reverend Smitty. I guarantee it. Alright, so I keep all of this in mind to go about every day doing the good things and good to others. See, that's a good, that's good. <laughs> that's we all should strive to do good things, especially to others. And you think about, you know, what is the golden rule? What is the golden rule? Let's see. What is that verse that Jesus says? Uh, therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you do ye even so to them for this is the law and the prophets all right so that's the golden rule so whatever you would have men do to you do ye also unto them whatever you would like for them to do to you you do that the same to them treat them the way that you would want to be treated right the golden rule all right, so it's it's important, it really is, to do good things toward others whenever the opportunity presents itself, okay? And it's the small things that matter, really. All right, thanks for sharing your knowledge. I have learned so much more from you than all the church and teachings I have had to date. For example, I don't think I would have known to look at the incorrect Bible teachings of others 
whether that be intentional, deceiving, or just ignorant. I knew the TV preachers were not good, but I was not aware of how they were mis misleading us. I think I mostly thought of them as just greedy. Yeah, and, and so the deception in the world is greater than ever before, and it's obvious, right? And it's incredible, it's amazing that Jesus tells us that this would this is exactly how it's supposed to go down until the end of the world so much so that if if God let things continue as they are that there would be nobody saved the deception in this world is that bad so obviously you know what's causing all this deception well it's a lack of faith in the word of God people today don't believe the Bible they hold in their hands. They might read this and say, well, oh, well, the Greek says that. Or Reverend Smitty says this. You know, the Catholics and the hooligans or whoever, they, they say this. Or this is what we believe. You know, this sort of thing. And everybody wants to believe everything except what exactly is written. You know, this is directly from God. All right, but the serpent has come in and gotten people to question, is this really what God says? You know, doesn't that sound familiar to you? You know, think about this. This is the exact words of God, including this number. It's from God, directly from God. Now think about this. The serpent has come in and he is trying to get you to doubt that this is from God. All right. Yeah? Has God said? You know, shouldn't you go back to the Greek or the Hebrew or the Chinese or the Portuguese or whatever language? And hey, what's it say? You know, some manuscripts say this, and some manuscripts say that. And isn't that, that's not what the serpent does? All right, let's go. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Matthew 18, verse 11. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost I wonder if we can do it this way I mean, think about this where's the asterisk no all right let's go back this way let's do it this way let's go let's do it this way what do we got here NIV perfect right there 10 11, 12. Think about this. Oh, well, what's this say? Some manuscripts include here the words of Luke 19.10. Some manuscripts. So this is getting you to doubt what is written or what's not even there. Well, maybe it should be there. Maybe it shouldn't be there. You know, some manuscripts say this. You know, the Greek says that. And can we really believe anything that's being written? Doesn't that sound familiar to you? I mean, have you read anything in the Bible that suggests that, hey, you know, that sounds familiar. That sounds like this is what's happening. Yeah, I mean, it seems like somewhere I read in the Bible that it says something to the effect of, Yea, has God said? Yeah, that's right. In the third chapter of the book. The first appearance of the serpent. <clears throat> chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto them, Yea, as God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question mark. Yea, as God said, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the 
know if God really said that, if maybe he said it, but he meant it. And, you know, you got to go back to the Greek, and you got to have these, listen, these manuscripts, they don't say that. The, these other manuscripts, they say something else. And so you can't really believe what God says. The serpent's still doing it today. He did it way back in the garden. You think it's going to change? You think he's repented? No. It's still going on today. And so people are opening up their books, their Bibles, and they're reading this. And they're, well, they're not believing it's from God. When they should believe it's from God. Because it is from God. If they have a King James Bible, they have the direct words of God. These words are directly from God. They are from God, directly to us, and for us. All right, and that's a, that requires faith. That requires faith. Absolutely. You think about the cloven tongues in in Acts chapter two, right? The cloven tongues, like as of fire. How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? You know, think about that. I mean, really, that's phenomenal that every man could hear the Word of God in their own tongue. Now, in the law, it is written. In the book of Isaiah, it is written, In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet, for all that, will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. <clears throat> but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. All right. So when you open up your Bible and you start to read, are these the direct words of God? Or are these interpretation of God's word? Is this man's way of telling us what God said. So when you go to the Greek, are you trusting the interpretation of this foreign language? Are you believing the men to tell you what God says? That's what you're doing, isn't it? You have to. Because you don't know what the Greek says. And neither do those men that are interpreting the Word of God for you. And now think about this. Man cannot live on bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live it is written that man should not live by bread alone but by every word of God so if we're dependent on living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God where can we find every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God? Because according to the so-called experts, this is not the Word of God. This is the interpretation of the Word of God. This is what they say the Greek. To, this is, you know, this is the interpretation of the Greek, all right, or the interpretation of the Hebrew, or the interpretation of the Chinese whatever it wouldn't matter to me because I don't know any of those languages so are we believing this is from man is this man's version of what God says or do we believe this is exactly what God says and that these words are directly from God right so this is the difference between faith in the different levels of faith if you will because if you don't believe these are the exact words of God, then you are lacking in faith. You don't have full confidence that this is from God. And you should. 
because this is directly from God alright so I appreciate uh, this comment here did I read the whole thing yeah no I did yeah I mean you're identifying all, all the wickedness in the world and that's great because this there's a lot of evidence for the wickedness of this world no question about it the good news is that we have an escape from this world and it's our Lord Jesus Christ he will save us guarantee it 